Welcome to this tutorial that is part of the exercise called Measuring Co-Seismic Deformation with Differential Topography in Undergraduate Courses. Right now we will describe how to use Cloud Compare to estimate 3D displacements from high-resolution topography acquired before and after an earthquake. We are going to talk about how to calculate 3D displacements from topography data sets acquired before and after an earthquake using software called Cloud Compare. So the first thing we want to do in Cloud Compare is to open both of our last data sets. So we go to File, Open. I put both of my data sets in this uh, folder directory called Differencing. So here we see pre wasatch small dot las, post wasatch small dot las. Um, and these are both LAS or LAS files that have the point cloud topography from here the pre acquired before the earthquake, uh, and here the post, which is our synthetic earthquake topography. So we can highlight both of these and we're going to press open. It's important or at least easier to open both of the data sets at the same time. So we can say open. We are asked if we want to apply a global shift to our data set. And the answer is yes. We want to translate the center of our data set here to 000. zero, zero. Um, and why? Well, this decreases the memory usage. So if you see here, we have these large six or seven digit numbers before our decimal point. And we're doing these topography calculations. We don't need to be working with all of these numbers when our data sets are only at most a couple of kilometers. So what we want to do and so when we're done that, we'll have x, y, z are all equal to about zero. And these numbers after the decimal point are OK. So we want to say yes to all. And then we can wait a couple of seconds while both of the data sets load into Cloud Compare. So here is our topography data sets now loaded into Cloud Compare. First, we can look at the pre wasatch or the before the earthquake data. The freeze that is colored, uh, it's an RGB color, so we can scroll around. One thing I like to do is to increase the size of the points. So we click or we highlight the name of our data set, and then we can come down here where it says point size default might want to make it bigger, say to four. Um, yeah, and then so when we zoom in, things look nice. Then zoom out. And for ease of distinguishing the pre and the post earthquake, the post earthquake data set does not have the RGB and is just here shown in white, but we can still see the big uh, topography created by the Wasatch Fault. The first step to do the topographic differencing is to cut out sizes of, uh, cut out pieces of both the pre and post earthquake topography, and the uh, displacement that we estimate is going to be representative the average displacement of those pieces of topography. So we'll begin first with the pre-earthquake um, data here. Um, and to cut out a piece, we want to go to the scissors tool. Um, and then um, we can first click out the area of the box that we want to use to calculate our displacement. I suggest that the width of your box is about 300 to 500 meters. You see our scale bar here. This is 1,000 meters or one kilometer. So to cut out the box, we first click here in green. So it's now going to be my box. I'm going to represent um, the pre-earthquake data. 
So I outline it here with this green, and then when I'm done outlining this box, I uh, right click with a Windows or control click with a Mac, and then I can select to keep just uh, the inside of this box by using this segment in tool. So I click that, and if I'm happy with my choice, I can uh, wait a few seconds, let Cloud Compare do its computation, and then I will want to say uh, confirm segmentation here by clicking this green arrow. Okay, so now we have our pre-earthquake topography and we can see this box here. So if we want to just look at the box, um, we can turn on just our segmented piece of topography. So now we want to take our post-earthquake data, which is shown in white, and cut out an overlapping um, but slightly larger box. So we're going to select the post-earthquake data and again use the scissors tools. So we outline a box that needs to just be a little bit bigger than the first one uh, we made in the pre-topography. So again, we outline and when we're done, we right click and we, if we're happy, we can select uh, this segment in tool, followed by this uh, green check mark here. Okay, so if we weren't happy, we would have wanted to select that red X and then we could have started again. So now we can turn off most of the topography and just look at our box here. So now we want to do the iterative closest point alignment on these two pieces of topography. So our first step is to select both of the pieces of topography. Um, and then we want to go to this green ice cream looking tool right here. So we can click that. And then this is an important step. We want to make sure that our um, pre-topography is going to be the aligned and our post-topography is going to be the reference. So if we want to hit swap, now we can see that's what we have, where the uh, pre-topography is our aligned and the post-topography is the reference. That means that the pre-topography is going to be moved iteratively until it produces a good alignment here with the post-topography. And so when we're happy with that, we press OK. Now Cloud Compare is doing the computations to align these two pieces of topography and spits out this transformation matrix here. This is this four by four uh, matrix, where these first uh, three by three part of the matrix is our rotation. You can see here that we have ones along the diagonals and zeros elsewhere. So this suggests that we have very low rotation. Um, and this final column is the displacements. So we have the east-west, the or the x displacement, the north-south or the y displacement, and the vertical displacement. So here, the largest displacement is the vertical, and this shows that the region uh, that we selected moved down by about 1.3 meters during the earthquake. So when we're happy, we can say OK. So that is how we compute 3D displacements from topography acquired before and after an earthquake. To compute additional displacements, say on the other side of the fault, you would want to repeat the same procedure, but select um, your boxes here on this side of the fault. To make your workspace cleaner, I would suggest that you delete or remove the pieces of topography that you no longer need for your analysis. Have fun!